Phoenix has announced the Zero X Pro. It's got 108 megapixels and it can go up to 60x zoom, which is touted to capture the moon, literally. I did it and you'll see it later in this video. All of these and more are what I'll be exploring in this video. Hey guys, it's Fisal here. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. I'd love it if you could hit that like button so more people can get to see this analysis of Infinix's new flagship product. Without further ado, let's get to the video. Infinix's Zero X Pro is pretty unique or kind of over the top with regards to the unboxing experience. I got this gigantic box with an accessory inside and opening it up, we see the smartphone's box itself, which is quite tall. And then we get a mobile phone gimbal for capturing videos in a smoother way than you probably would get if you only use the phone itself. This accessory also has its own accessory in form of a stand that would help you keep the gimbal straight when it's screwed underneath. You also get the gimbal's charger. The stand for the gimbal can also collapse and it extends for better grippability. Overall, I think the box looks fascinating to say the least. Now diving into the smartphone's box itself, you can't help but notice how tall it is. Uh, taking the wrap off of it, you encounter the carbon fiber print look. On the box itself, it's not actual carbon fiber but a print. However, the texture is a little bit nice to the touch. You can see the branding all over the box and you can also see uh, that on the box there's 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. I also like that the branding has a colorful reflection on the zero X section from green to blue and purple, you know, mixed colors here and there. Inside the box, you've got the device itself with all of the specs written in front of it. It's got a telescope zoom camera that is touted as you know, one that can see the moon. Yes, we tested it, you get to see it soon. The ultra night vision camera, dual chip for high-end speed, it's 6.67 inch full HD ultra smooth display, 120 hertz. It's capable of 45 watt charging as well. The pad holding the device is where we've got the box housing some paperwork and other extras like the SIM ejector tool. We've also got some promotion paperwork from X Park and the $1 X Club invite. We also got a silicone case that spells N-O-W you now and part of what we've seen in the teaser images from Infinix it does fit well and I've of course been using it with the case throughout my usage and by the way the case is also designed by Orimo. Now to what's making this phone's box long, we have the 45 watt fast charging brick with orange accents and as advertised this charging brick or power adapter will charge up to 40% in 15 minutes of charging. It's something I really want to test and know how it would feel. Anyway, just you can follow me on Twitter or Instagram and I usually post my full charging speed on there from zero to 100%. You're given a USB-C cable in the box and of course, you've got well-built headphones as well. Getting to the device itself, when you take the wrap off, you get this shiny star-like design back and uh, I think it's supposed to mimic the capability of the device being able to capture the moon, you know, with the stars all around it as, as such. You've got the camera array on the back and keep in mind that this camera bump is significant so it would definitely rock on a flat surface. If you're not using a case with it, it doesn't mean much. Though. There's nothing at the top side of the phone and on the right side is where we've got the power button and volume rockers. The left side houses the dual nano SIM and micro SD card slot. This slot is kind of efficient at least with utilizing the top and the bottom section so it's not just long. Infinix still gives you a headphone jack in 2021. Beside it is the microphone, USB port and speakers. Sadly it's a single speaker at the bottom and not a stereo speaker. So you can you know block it when you're watching movies or playing games so it's not so great you know for those for those tasks if you're not using headphones. Now still in the build quality department, this phone reminds me of two things. Uh, number one is the very first Infinix Zero of old. The very first Infinix Zero, that was my first Infinix phone. I love that phone. It holds a special place in my heart and uh, it had square edges and was straight kind of like this and it was just like this phone back in 2014. Moving on now, seven years later in the world of the iPhone 12 Pro and 13, they kind of clash with regards to design. Dare I say, you know, my 12 Pro Max and this Zero X Pro have almost the exact same dimensions and design features sort of and design language with regards to that straight edges and uh, you know, the camera bump. This phone is slim, it's also shiny on the back as I've mentioned. I've been using the case on it and without this case, it feels slippery although it's light so you, you shouldn't be scared of it falling since it's uh, a very very strong 
polycarbonate material. Of course, there's no notch up front here. You only get a hole punch cutout. The Zero X series of devices are set at 120 hertz. You also get 700 nits of peak brightness, which is just slightly over half of what you get on something like an iPhone 13, for instance. You have 6.67 inches of screen on here. The resolution is set at 1080 by 2400, and it's a 395, almost 400 PPI display, which is sharp. You can, in fact, stream 4K videos at 60 frames per second if you have the bandwidth and it comes out looking sharp you know apart from the single speaker on the bottom there is no doubt about the video qualities on this guy right here and thanks to that 120 hertz display you can enjoy scrolling through apps at the interface looks and feels cooler and just overall fluid my only downside is the haptics it's not as responsive as many higher end devices still the same you know when you type and we just get random vibrations. It still feels um, not there yet. Infinix Zero X comes with something we're already familiar with in the Trajan line of flagships, and that's the processor. It's the Helio G95 in what they term dual chip. You can find this processor in the Techno Phantom X. You can also find it in the Infinix Note 10 Pro. I mentioned it before that it's a gaming-centric processor capable of good quality and very lag-free gaming experiences. Software on the Zero X is of course Android 11 on XOS 7.6. And regarding the storage, you've got 8 gigs of RAM and either 128 gigs or 256 gigs of storage. This device is 128 gigs. Now, now, moving on to the gaming battery section, just like I mentioned with the quality of the processor being, you know, gaming centric, well, you also have the graphics and CPU capabilities that were uh, somewhat familiar with the previous generation of devices released earlier this year. You do get the full range of Call of Duty mobile graphics and frame rate levels, which is kind of my, my biased outlook for mobile games since, you know, it's a three gigabyte game uh, with a lot of dy dynamic graphics. Per usual, if you max out the frame rate on Call of Duty, you can't max out the graphics and if you max out the graphics, you can max out the frame rate. You've got Game Zone to organize your games and optimize them for gameplay. Uh, you can toggle that you don't want to see phone calls or you want to hide incoming messages or you just want to you know, enjoy your gaming session to make your gaming session seamless. You can take a quick screenshot or screen record you know, by just swiping right when you're about to game instead of fiddling here and there. It also shows you how much of the CPU and GPU power your game is using. So I did my usual test where I played Call of Duty for a while and uh, in 30 minutes of Call of Duty gaming, I averaged a 12% loss. So this phone should theoretically have a four hour gameplay, heavy gameplay live span, you know, at least for heavy games like Call of Duty Mobile, which let's face it, I don't think you're going to be playing game for four hours straight. Do, do you? However, you can be confident that the day's use should net you like 10 hours if you're always on the internet or you're browsing social media and you know emailing plus typing and the gaming here and there. Standby time should take longer than that thanks to the 4,500 milliamp hour battery on here. And speaking of, you have a 45 watt charger that'll take you from zero to 40% in 15 minutes. Who doesn't want that? And when you put all of that together, well, Nepa cannot challenge you. Apart from the pin pattern, password, and uh, those regular stuff, you've got face unlock and fingerprint reader. The face unlock speed is decent. I liked it. I found it to even be faster than the on-screen fingerprint reader. The on-screen fingerprint reader isn't perfect. Uh, it's sometimes like a hit or miss, but it's nice to at least have an on-screen fingerprint reader. It works uh, a lot of times. Now with regards to the camera on the Infinix Zero X Pro, the front side has a 16 megapixel sensor plus flash and the back is where the magic happens. One gigantic 108 megapixel capable sensor with optical image stabilization. And then you have two 8 megapixel lenses plus flash, something like the 5 megapixel or 2 megapixel macro that they just jam pack there. If you look at the inscription, you see something for 60x. That's what does the work of capturing the moon. Yes, yes, I said we'll explore it in a bit. Indoor selfies have some sort of light that makes it work well and look decently sharp. However, the exposure problem would not go away, you know, it would get overexposed. Selfie portrait also doesn't get that smooth of a blow around the edge. You can notice that with my hair in this image. Landscape shots looked really good in my opinion and my point of view with regards to clarity and sharpness. It does lack a little bit of dynamism, but that's not a huge deal breaker. Now going closer to subjects, show you how the background blur or bokeh would work in portrait mode. 
Focusing on the back though would expose some of the software composition issues of blurring the foreground. It's not just super there yet. When it comes to the night mode on this camera, yes, there is in fact night mode on both the front camera and the back camera. I noticed that in my normal mode, there, there will be quite you know some grain because it's, it's dark. However, I managed to get some sharpness, but in the night mode shots, uh, it doesn't have that sharpness. It's bright, of course, but it looks smudged and soft with artificial sharpness added but it brightens the image, which is kind of what night mode is usually about. If there's an okay amount of light, you should get a good image quality, especially in low light. Now, Infinix says that this phone can capture the moon, or can it? Well, here's the thing. In the camera options, you see all the camera modes. The last thing you see is super moon mode. This mode is where you can go to the maximum of 60x zoom. So what is about this moon thing? We went outside to test it out and here's what we found. It goes into so much detail and in my case, uh, the moon was more of a half moon and I could see the texture of the moon. Now to be sure that this wasn't a filter or something that Infinix was trying to pull a trick on, I checked the camera with the bulb on the street and I could see each individual bulb. So yes, it's not a filter. The shots didn't look super great though, but uh, that's rarely a given considering that you are zooming 60 times. <laughs> what do you want to get when you zoom 60 times all the way? I'd say it's a cool feature that you probably use once in a while to just show off. See, hey guys, my, my phone can capture the moon. Uh, Let's, let's check it out. Now with regards to the video features, this camera can shoot up to 4K at 30 frames per second. In good lighting, you get good videos. I found that the shots from the camera does look fair outside, the skies, the environment, and everything looked you know, clear and bright. There's something to consider when it comes to the dynamic range and uh, you know just general exposure levels. If you're dealing with contrasting exposures, you will tend to get some overexposure both on the front and the back camera as always. And I noticed that as well, and you can see that on the left side of this video. So uh, the Infinix Zero X Pro costs 179,600 naira, or approximately $360. Then there's the Zero X. It's the non-pro edition with a smaller 64 megapixel camera on the back uh, instead of the 108 megapixel we get here. And it also doesn't have a 256 gig storage option. It's just 128 gigs. That Zero X is retailing for 144,600 naira, approximately $290. With the 120 hertz, although still maintaining their current gaming centric processor, the Helio G95, with the 60X zoom camera while still not getting some of those modes at 100%, there's a lot of positives and some downsides, but I'd love to hear from you guys based on what you've seen so far in this video. What are your thoughts about the Infinix Zero X Pro? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. If you found this video useful, consider giving it a like and do consider subscribing to the channel so you'll be the first to know when I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the very next video.